Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another video. My first post-apocalyptic video. Um, I'm going to try and make this as short and to the point as I can because that audio problem has resurfaced and it drives me nuts and I'm sure it drives some of you out there nuts as well. Uh, I'm going to touch on some um, really amazing Laserdisc and VHD finds um, that I've made recently. Um, but I'm also going to be showing my latest game system ad. I've been wanting one of these for a long time, but every time I went to get one, I had to put it on the back burner because something would happen. Generally what would happen is we would have to replace a DS because my eldest daughter went through two DS's and my youngest went through three DS's. That's five DS's. Now my eldest wanted a PSP. My youngest wanted a 3DS. My wife checked everywhere for a PSP and couldn't find one. So we came to the conclusion, well, we'll have to go to Game Over. That is a really amazing retro gaming chain that we have here. Well, chain. There's two of them. Um, they sell everything. They sell the new stuff, but they have everything else from the new stuff all the way back to the Atari 2600. They even have games and systems for the CDI, for the Pico, for the Virtual Boy, for the Vectrex. The Vectrex is under glass, as a matter of fact. Anyway, um, life always uh, feels it necessary to remind me that we can never get out of there without spending a couple of hundred dollars. Yes, I know. Yeah, anyway, um, we went to Best Buy to get a 3DS, and then we were going to go to Game Over to get the PSP for my daughter to get me what I wanted. Um, I looked at the 3DS, and I liked it. I'm going to get one one of these days, but I didn't feel comfortable paying that kind of money for my daughter when she was just going to turn around and more likely than not, and break it within two weeks. So when we went to Game Over, I got her a, a um, DSi, which is not what she wanted. But I told her, A, we have a lot of games for the DS, and the uh, 3DS is not backwards compatible with games for the regular DS. And on top of which, you're hard on systems. If you can go six months without damage accruing on this DSi, we'll get you a 3DS. So that remains to be seen. My eldest wanted a PSP, so she got a PSP 2000. I wanted a PSP. I got a PSP 3000. Principally, the difference between the 3000 and the 2000 is the 3000 has a better screen. It looks better. It has less glare. Still a magnet for fingerprints, but a better screen. Also, the 3000 has built-in Skype. And a camera for Skype, I guess. And of course, it has the ability to play UMDs. I've already accrued a, a large number of PSP UMD movies uh, for this day. So there's that. Now, LaserDisc. I use the LaserDisc database a lot. And the largest retailer that sells through the LaserDisc database is Music and More, which is located in the Netherlands. On the one hand, it's somewhat ironic because the uh, LaserDisc format never really took off in the Netherlands, but on the other hand, it makes sense because uh, the Netherlands is where Philips is based, and Philips co-developed the LaserDisc format along with its American subsidiary, Magnavox, and the American company, MCA, which at the time owned Universal Studios. Well, he's got over 4,600 LaserDiscs in stock and it's growing all the time. And uh, another thing I was getting tired of doing 
at the database. If you call up your collection or anybody else's collection, or you do an advanced search, or you go to one of the shops, whatever, the default is to display 25 releases per page. And I asked Julian, the administrator, uh, if there was a way that he could fix it so we could change that def default. He said, there's already a way. He told me what it was, and I promptly forgot what it was. Uh, but I brought it up again later, and somebody else mentioned what it was, and I wrote it down. I've been using it ever since. It works like a charm. Um, what you do is you go all the way up to the top of the page where the URL is, and all the way to the right of the URL, and then you add to the URL the ampersand, which is the um, funky symbol uh, that usually shares a key with the number seven at the top on the keyboard. Follow that with the letters MAX. Doesn't matter whether that's lowercase or uppercase. And then equals and then the number you want to display. So you would add, say, ampersand max equals 750. And you would see 750 on each page. Much easier way to do it. Anyway, I was going through Music and More's inventory, and I came across something, and I had to do a double take. Because while intellectually I knew these existed, every Laserdisc, every Laserdisc made had one. But I've never run across one. I've never heard of anyone coming across one. Um, so me seeing that made me stop and do a double take. What it was is a test pressing. It was a test pressing of a Steven Spielberg film that Phillips was planning on releasing in uh, the Netherlands. They did the test pressing at a facility I didn't even know existed. In fact, it's not listed anywhere on any site at the da LaserDisc database this facility is not mentioned. And I brought it up to the guy who runs Music and More, and he said, well, the reason is the only thing they do, or the only thing they did, was very small print runs for internal use at Phillips only. So, um, there are very few of them, and, um, that's how he gets all of them. He's in the Netherlands, and Phillips is in the Netherlands, and he gets a lot of uh, people coming in and selling him laser discs that are Phillips employees. Well, it's a Steven Spielberg film, as I believe I mentioned. It's a film that was released on Laserdisc numerous times in the U.S., several times in Japan, and several times elsewhere. But it's a planned Netherlands release. Phillips canceled after the test pressing. That test pressing was made in the Netherlands. Um, when it comes, I'll show it. In the meantime, it had come in a plain, generic white jacket. No artwork or anything. I saw another one with a plain white jacket. But it wasn't a test pressing. So I asked him about it. And he said that by the way, it's a movie that was released on Laserdisc more than once elsewhere. Um, but that was a planned release by Philips for the Netherlands. They got all the way to the manufacturing stage before it was canceled. That is, it was, there was a test pressing, then they kept going. Um, they approached Kure, or they had Kure, which is in Japan, make up a small batch of discs. And at that point, they canceled it. So it was before they even came out with any artwork for the jacket. So technically, it's not a test pressing. It's a pressing that never got released. But only a handful of them were made. So when that comes, I will show it. Something else I need to touch on. Um, Julian, the administrator of the Laserdisc database, he sent me a private message and basically was, uh, I thought you might 
be interested in this and smiley face and then a hyperlink. I clicked on the hyperlink and I about had a heart attack. What did I see? A laser disc from Nintendo. Now yes, I know there was the laser active system that played video games and um, a lot of other things, but this was something different. These discs were made for point-of-sale kiosks. Um, built within the kiosk would be a laser disc player. And they would be running this laser disc on a continuous loop. Good thing about the laser disc format, nothing ever comes into contact with the disc while it's playing, therefore it can theoretically loop forever. Um, but anyway, these discs were full of non-playable uh, demos of upcoming Nintendo releases. And it had everything that goes along with it. Placards and stickers and an SNES cartridge which says right on it, do not insert in an SNES game system as you would damage the system. I don't know what you were supposed to put it into, but uh, there was that. Just a ton of stuff. And mouth hung open and and I told Julian uh, probably never be able to afford something like that. Don't know who that is. Um, but then I got to thinking, I wonder how many of those there have been. Maybe there were two. And did Julian add it to the database? Well, I pretty much figured he would have. Um, but I went to the page that lists the 100 most recent ads and they had like six or seven of them but there were holes um, the one with the highest volume number was volume 16 the name of these discs by the way which were all made by 3M were Nintendo Power Preview so I am definitely going to keep my eye open for those um, something else I ran across, but this has to do with the VHD format. Now, those of you who have been watching my channel know what I think of the VHD format. It is just an amazing format, way ahead of its time, only released in Japan. Capacitance disk system like RCA CED format, but didn't use grooves like the CED format did. And in fact, I have never bought a VHD that was defective. Not one. I can't say that about laser discs. I can't say that about CDs for sure. I can't even say that about VHS tapes or DVDs. I've always run across at least a couple of defective ones. But I've never run across a defective VHD disc. Anyway, um, the VHD format had a lot of neat features that allowed intercompatibility you could play PAL, NTSC, or CCAM on any player. Didn't matter. Um, but there was also the interactive uh, part of the format. Very interactive. Uh, in fact, the seek time, I've noticed, with my VHD player anyway, I've got a national, aka Panasonic, uh, Disc Lord that I imported from Japan. And the picture quality is a picture quality is stunning on it. Absolutely stunning. And unlike uh, CEDs where letterboxing was rare, in fact, the only one I can think of off the top of my head was uh, Woody Allen's film Manhattan, and that that had to be letterbox because his contracts with the United Artists specified any release had to be letterboxed or in widescreen. Well, there is the interactivity part, but there is also, there was also an audio only variation to the format called AHD. The audio was digital. You could have four digital audio tracks, or you could have three digital audio tracks and graphics. 
I was going through Rico Banshaw. So I've been going back there and um, whatever I wasn't finding in the database, uh, LaserDisc database, I was submitting. I have submitted over 30 so far that have been processed and another 50 that are waiting to be processed. And I was going through alphabetically and I only got as far as the middle of the E's. That is, titles that started with the letter E only well, halfway through those, and I've already come across 80. And there's there are other people, mainly Cold Sleeper, who have been adding VHD releases. So the VHD library is growing by leaps and bounds, and it's rapidly approaching uh, the number of titles for uh, the HD DVD format. And they're still adding um, releases for that format. In fact, just in the last couple of weeks they added some. And more laser discs, of course. And so, you know, I saw that. And then I saw some anime video games on VHDs. And they were a little pricey, around $24, $25. But I decided to go ahead and get them. And they're winging their way to me as we speak. They may even have landed by now. Um, now there's a website called uh, VHD uh, Discworld. I'll try to remember to stick the link down there. Um, they mentioned that these interactive anime games are hard to find, highly collectible, and generally expensive. Now, as it turned out, as soon as I saw them, I placed it into my cart. I mean, nobody else could go in and buy it behind me or while I was trying to decide what I was going to do. Then I decided, well, you know what? I better buy that um, other disc I saw, which was graphics and three digital audio tracks. You have to remember, this came this format came out before CD format the CD format came out. And it uses the same protocols. So VHD was the first home format, certainly the first home video format, that um, fell into the parameters of the whatever they called it, C D group, C D group or whatever. But anyway, um, it was gone. Somebody bought it. In just a few seconds that I was bouncing back and forth between that and the games, it had sold. But at least I had gotten it added I had got it added to the LaserDisc database. So it's in there. Um, it's just I wasn't able to buy it. So anyway, that's what's up uh, currently. Uh, until next time. Stay awesome. Place a DS. Because my eldest daughter went through two DSs. And my youngest went through three DSs. That's five DSs. Now my eldest wanted a PSP. My youngest wanted a 3DS. My wife checked everywhere for a PSP and couldn't find RA2600. They even have games and systems for the CDI, for the Pico, for the Virtual Boy, for the Vectrex. The Vectrex is under glass, as a matter of fact. Anyway, um, wife always uh, feels it necessary to remind me that we can never get out of there without using Laserdisc and VHD finds um, that I've made recently. Um, but I'm also going to be showing my latest game system ad. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. But every time I went to get one, I had to put it on the back burner because something would happen. Generally what would happen is we would have to reap one. So we came to the conclusion, well, we'll have to go to Game Over. That is a really amazing retro gaming chain that we have here. Well, chain. There's two of them. Um, they sell everything. They sell the new stuff, but they have everything else 
from the new stuff all the way back to the Atari. Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another video. My first post-apocalyptic video. Um, I'm going to try and make this as short and to the point as I can because that audio problem has resurfaced and it drives me nuts and I'm sure it drives some of you out there nuts as well. Uh, I'm going to touch on some um, really amazing